Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, family and friends will say goodbye as five people killed in a Clay County crash will be laid to rest today. Governor Matt Bevin shaking things up in Frankfurt as he orders changes to state marriage licenses. And today is one of the largest days for traveling out there. Coming up, we'll tell you what you can expect as you prepare to hit the roads. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome into you. I'm Rebecca Smith. And I'm Bill Bryant. And we're delighted you're with us. A couple of days until Christmas, a lot of people are on the move. In fact, we're talking about record travel now between yeah. the Christmas and New Year's. They're talking about 100 million people for the first time on Ooh. the roads. Well, you know, it makes sense with gas prices being yeah, so low, too. Um, and hopefully they're safe because, you know, today, for one, is a first alert severe weather day. Let's get the latest with Jim Caldwell. Now, we're going to be tracking rounds of showers and storms, not only today, Day where we have the first alert severe weather day, but right on into the holiday as well. Even this morning, we're tracking a batch of some uh, moderate and occasionally heavy showers that are moving across parts of Kentucky. And you can see this little streak of the heavier bands. We talked about again running into morning showers yesterday and here they are right on cue and they will continue to kind of fill in lift through the area and they'll be in Lexington here within the next 15 to 20 minutes looks like already trying to cross the border from uh, Jessamine County very mild morning as well we are talking temperatures in the upper 50s and low 60s area wide now into the day today once we get into the afternoon and evening we start tracking that severe weather threat strong winds large hail and maybe even an isolated tornado. I will give you all that information. We'll break it down hour by hour coming up in just a little bit. Okay, and we'll see you then. Thank you, Jim. We're tracking some breaking news this morning out of Rockcastle County. Multiple crews on the scene for a structure fire at the Rockcastle County Detention Center. Now, we're working to gather more information about what exactly happened there, but we are told that the fire started around 3 o'clock this morning. Fire officials say units from the entire county are currently on hand there in Mount Vernon. They're working to put out the flames. Uh, you can see from this live picture uh, that we do have, have a reporter heading to the scene as well. We have now established this live picture. We will update the developing story regarding crews working a fire at the detention center in Rockcastle County. And more details as we get them coming up in the next few minutes. Well, just days before Christmas, families in Leslie County are preparing to bury four people killed in a suspected DUI crash. Judy Pennington Adams, her pregnant granddaughter, Tiffany Williams Morgan, and a friend, Charlene Lowe Lewis, died in a crash in Clay County. Tiffany's son, Kyson, who would have been two years old tomorrow, was with them. He died hours later at the hospital. Two separate ceremonies for the five victims will be held today in Leslie County. Police suspect Jason Gibson was drunk and on drugs when he crashed into their car on Hal Rogers Parkway on Friday. At last check, Gibson is still in the hospital and has not been charged. Two people are recovering this morning after being hit while backing out of their driveway. That accident happened shortly before 11 last night in Franklin County. Police say a Mustang with two passengers was backing out of a driveway on Manly Leestown Road when an oncoming truck slammed into the back of them. We're told the two people in the Mustang were taken to Franklin County Regional Hospital with minor injuries. As for the driver of the truck, police say he was airlifted to UK Hospital for treatment. His injuries are not known to us right Right now, investigators believe that alcohol may have played a role in the crash, but they say no charges have been filed at this time. A Franklin County man is facing several charges after sheriff's deputies say he led them on a high-speed chase. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says a deputy was checking out a burglary report when he spotted the suspect's car nearby. The deputy tried to stop the car, but investigators say the driver, 20-year-old Joshua Padone, kept going. Police tried to use spike strips to stop the car. That didn't work. Eventually, police say Padone jumped out of the car in Anderson County and ran off but he was soon arrested. He is now charged with burglary, fleeing or evading, wanton endangerment, and DUI. Well, less than a month after becoming Kentucky's 62nd governor, Matt Bevin is taking action on several commitments he made during his campaign. Yesterday, Governor Bevin issued five executive orders addressing some issues that surfaced during Governor Steve Bashir's administration. The orders will affect a variety of issues, including state marriage licenses for one, Earlier this year, of course, you remember Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis refused to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples because of her religious beliefs. She took issue with her name being on those licenses. 
Governor Bevin, who has been a supporter of Kim Davis, has decided that will not be an issue any longer. Now, under an executive order, the names of county clerks will be removed from Kentucky marriage licenses. Supporters say the order will now give everyone a chance to be treated fairly. The issue with me was never to be unfair with anyone. The issue to me was as much as anything was to be fair to everyone. As for Governor Bevin's opponents, they disagree with the orders filed yesterday. The ACLU of Kentucky represents the plaintiffs who sued Kim Davis. They released a statement in reference to the order saying, in part, quote, the requirement that the county clerk's name appear on marriage licenses is prescribed by Kentucky law and is not subject to unilateral change by the governor conceded by the previous administration in court filings. Governor Bevin also issued other executive orders late yesterday. One of them suspends former Governor Steve Beshear's order that had reinstated voting rights for convicted felons. Governor Bevin says he supports the measure, but he feels it should go through the legislature first. Another order put a freeze on hiring for all state government positions until the governor and his team can analyze the open positions to see if they need to be filled. And another order suspends Spends a planned minimum wage increase for state workers. Now that we're just days away from Christmas, many people around the country preparing for it and uh, their holiday travel as well. Yeah, over the next few days, millions will either hit the roads or take flight to various parts of the country. But unlike previous years, those traveling may face some unexpected issues. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain joining us live from our news desk with a closer look at what people should expect before heading out the door. Good morning. Good morning. Today is expected to be one of the busiest travel days of the holiday season. And as you've heard, today is a first alert severe weather day. And it's not due to snow this Christmas. Actually, high winds and storms along the eastern part of the country could cause some delays for those traveling. If you're traveling more than 50 miles between Sorry. Christmas and New Year's, you will be one of the millions hitting the road and skies this week. As a matter of fact, AAA predicts for the first time the number of travelers will top 100 million. And this comes as heavy rains are expected expected across the eastern half of the country. Now, travel experts say the busy travel season is being fueled in part by renewed confidence in the economy and low ga gas prices. At the Live Desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. Members of a London church are making sure that homeless veterans have a way to stay warm over this winter. Members of Souls Harbor Church made blankets for those veterans and handed them out yesterday afternoon at St. James Place in Lexington. Organizers of the project say that they want to make sure that homeless veterans are not forgotten during the holidays. And especially at Christmas time, it breaks our hearts to hear that there are homeless veterans, especially in Kentucky. So we just wanted to bring a little cheer to him. The church also handed out food, apple cider, and some new towels to the veterans. That was a good move, and yeah. it's uh, good to see people, uh, you know, sharing and yeah. doing good. Yeah, warms your heart. Yeah. It does. Uh, 508 is our time on WKYT this morning, and we're just getting started on your Wednesday. It's something many people go their whole life without seeing. Coming up, we'll show you Mother Nature at its finest. And we can have Mother Nature at her meanest later on today with strong to severe thunderstorms rolling into Kentucky. We'll track them in just a few minutes. 